Welcome back troglodytes to a troglies vlogly. <laughs> I thought that was such a funny combination of words. We're just going to use it. So today's topic, shipping a return and shipping a guitar without a gig bag. As we learned in my episode of the whole double cut Epiphone Pro, this one had a few cosmetic blemishes that the seller and I, we just agreed it'd be best to return it and not worry about it. So when you're shipping a return, whether it's to like a dealer or an individual seller, you must use the original packing materials. If you don't, they could technically charge you a restocking fee. So that's why it is important to keep everything. It's also important to mimic their style, such as if they send it to you with string tension on the neck, send it back the same way. Because once again, some people are more finicky than others. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. So this is pretty close to how I unboxed it. We can compare them here. The only real major difference is I forgot to put this on on the inside, so I'll just put it there. Now, I'm gonna add a little bit of extra bubble wrap because I don't like how it still moves. Because whenever you're returning something, you are still responsible for it getting back to them in a similar condition. So it's also always a good idea to wipe down the instrument, like if you have fingerprints or anything. I already did that before the start of this video, so we'll box this up. Sometimes I'll take some liberties myself, like when I unboxed this, that was just kind of shoved in that space. I believe that's the proper way it was supposed to be done. And as we learned in my last boxing video, just shoving it in there like that is nowhere near as effective as rolling it. Another hint is if you fold it in half before you roll it, it gets twice as large. So that's pretty secure, but just for good measure, I'll put some more in here. All right, so that's the best way to ship a return. Use the packing materials provided to you, add additional if needed, and I suggest documenting the process, once again with either photos or a video of you packing it. But now on to the main topic of this video. Very similar to what we just did, shipping a guitar without a case and without a gig bag. This is not an ideal situation, but you know, this thing, it's, it's worth a little over a hundred bucks, so we can't really just give it a case for free. So this is how I ship guitars without cases. It's very similar to how I do a normal one. I'll detune the guitar first. And then I suggest making a case for it. You don't necessarily have to wrap the whole thing in bubble wrap or newspaper or anything. Just protect the most fragile areas. So I want to add some more reinforcement to the bottom of the instrument, as well as your typical neck break areas. You want the bubbles facing onto your product, because if you do it this way, it's not actually protecting it as well. All right, there. Now we have a nice little padding on the bottom. Now I'll do my typical business card thing. Okay, now that that's done, I always like to make sure that I have enough bubble wrap right here that it makes that the first point of impact not your headstock now in this case since we're doing a bolt-on neck guitar technically it would be cheaper to ship it if you took the neck off and boxed it all up in a smaller box but that's not always very convenient for the buyer because you have varying skill levels of who's buying this especially at this price point So there we go. You can see it'll hit this first before the headstock and we'll bow the box out a little bit. You can see that the bubble wrap is going to hit first because the headstock no longer touches the ground of my packing area. So this is the bare minimum. You can go ahead and wrap the rest of the guitar for the appearance of it. But... So now your box. It's best to double box it if you have the available means to do so. But this box is pretty strong on itself. I think it'll do nicely. 
Okay, so we got protection right there, right? But now we also need it in the bottom of the box. So as you can see, it's pretty secure in there, but the only scary thing is your headstock's right here. So we need to make sure that we get the box bowed out like that. So there you go. Now you can see the guitar is completely in the center. It's away from all impact areas. We should be good to go once this is filled in then. quite expensive to ship something without a proper gig bag or case. I use a lot more bubble wrap. I mean, that was almost 20 bucks worth right there. But it's good to know that it'll arrive safely. I have no doubt that I could just chuck this thing out the window and it would be okay. I mean, besides the whole G-Force drama. So now that all our work's done, it's time for some fun over here. We're gonna do a wild unboxing adventure. I don't know about you guys, but I really like packing guitars. It's a little bit of a labor of love, but once you know how to do it right, it's just kind of fun in a weird way. So let's see, we've got an ESP box here. I don't really like these thin boxes, and as we can see, very minimal packing materials. I mean, look how that thing moved. I have these nice storage containers. This is for like super space fillers. This is just for like paper fillers and that's bubble wrap. And then I've got my thing of peanuts over here. A word to the wise, be careful with these staples. Some people use these to secure the box, but watch out, these things will rip your skin up and they'll also damage your case as you're pulling them out. So always make sure those are, you know, nowhere near. Now the nice thing about this box being so slim is it was kind of pushing against the guitar so it wouldn't move too much. So I'd give that pack job like a six out of 10. Anything below a five is failure. So I think that's a bare minimum job that I think should hopefully have protected this guitar. So what do we have here for a wild unboxing? This is a model that I didn't think I would ever buy. This is the Zach Wild Camo Bullseye. I've had a few of the black and white ones, which I absolutely love those. I think they're kind of cool. It's a very signature Zach thing, but I'm not necessarily a huge fan of this version. But since Zach no longer partners with Gibson, these things have kind of become collectible. So this thing, it's definitely been played. We've got some scratches on it. it. It's interesting to say the least. Looks like we've got pretty good action on there. Bridge is pretty low. But what I like is the maple fretboard. But as always, Gibson did not lacquer it. So you can see it's a little bit dirty. But this is kind of a cool touch. The stinger on a bare maple neck. And it is three pieces here. And that's something else that I really dig about these Zach Wild models is they do have a maple neck because his Les Paul Custom was from the Norlin era originally and it had that maple neck. So it doesn't look like we have any breaks, cracks, or repairs. Uh, nothing too crazy going on with this one. So this will be an interesting review. I can tell you I already want to get rid of these though. So thank you Troglodytes for tuning into this vlog where we learned how to box guitars up that don't have cases, how to ship a return, and our wild unboxing. I'm hoping to do the 68 reissue gold top tomorrow, so that'll be a fun episode. Thank you Troglodytes for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. <laughs>